Hi, I'm Jessica Cochalone, and I am the Executive Director for the Shenandoah National Park Trust, and we are proud to be the philanthropic partner of the Shenandoah National Park. Our mission is to invest philanthropic dollars in initiative and initiatives and programs that ensure Shenandoah remains the crown jewel of the national park system, an economic driver for the region, and a national treasure for all to enjoy today and tomorrow. We are proud to be a supporter of Shenandoah's Artist in Residence program. National parks have always inspired artists in amazing ways, and in turn, those artists have created works that engage millions of people building awareness and fostering stewardship for our public lands. Through the generosity of our donors, we are able to support five artists in residence here in the park to live and work among Shenandoah's natural wonders and be inspired by it. We are very thankful for the support of our donors. If you are interested in learning more about Shenandoah National Park Trust and the ways that you can support this program, please visit us online at snptrust.org. My name is Nancy Hirschberger and I am from Breezewood, Pennsylvania, and I'm a fiber artist. I make quilts that are meant to be hung on a wall and um, as opposed to bedspreads that we're used to seeing. So my work is constructed the way quilts are constructed with three layers, a top, a middle, and a back and they're stitched together, but they're meant to be hung on the wall. I make mostly landscapes these days. And um, yes, I make some still lifes, but mostly landscapes. I'm inspired by nature. Well, a traditional pieced quilt, and that what we think of when our grandmothers handed us a quilt for Christmas in 1986. That quilt was constructed um, in a couple of ways, both with a sewing machine and it possibly hand quilted. Quilts were hand quilted and all the quilt police believed that there was nothing other than a hand quilted nothing, nothing. You had to have the quilt done by hand. So. Up until about the 80s, quilts were constructed by hand or quilted by hand, constructed with a sewing machine. So there are three layers, okay? Traditional quilts are made in, most often in a grid, okay? So we make a block and we make another block that is the same as that block, then we make another block the same as those, unless it's a um, what do they call a sampler, different blocks, and it's all a bunch of pieced shapes, okay? And they can be very interesting, and if you stand back and look at them, they're abstract designs. And most of them are in a grid with something that we call sashing and um, cornerstones, and they're beautiful. They're beautiful works of art. Honestly, I got tired of traditional piece quilts. Um, you probably don't want to use that, but I really did. I started out 14 years ago. Oh my gosh, was it 14 years ago? My first husband died very suddenly, very unexpectedly, just gone. And I was not handling it very well. This is too much information. But he, I, I couldn't deal. And my teenage daughter, our teenage daughter at the time, couldn't handle it either. So um, it was about a year into the worst year of our lives that my a friend said, Nancy, we're going to take a quilting class. I didn't even own a sewing machine. I don't have an arts background. I don't have a lot of the things that you would expect an artist to have. But she dragged me to this little quilt shop and she made me buy a cheap sewing machine, $79 Singer. I have so evolved from that. But um, 
yeah, I bought all of the uh, stuff that we needed to create these very simple little thing. And I was hooked. I just, I made one after another after another. And then started making traditional quilts, pieced quilts. The ones I started with were called rag quilts. They're very simple. They're very fun and warm and fuzzy. And, um, and then I advanced from, you know, evolved from that to traditional. And that was really good for a while. In fact, um, I came here, here, to uh, Shenandoah in, I don't know what year it was, 20 to 2014 or something like that. And, uh, and by then I was making traditional piece quilts. And this, I got here at the right time of year. It was mid-October, and you know how those colorful leaves, before they're all turning brown, there are just a few leaves on the, on the ground, on the road behind you, and they're churning up as you're driving down. Just magical. I was inspired to create a traditional piece quilt, which I didn't bring with me. Um, but that was my first inspiration. Right here, Shenandoah. You know, I never put that together. What I'd like people to see is that it is possible to convey a landscape with fabric, first of all. It's a quilt, but it's art. But I'd also like to challenge them to look beyond it, to think a little bit, to be inspired to find out where was that and go look for themselves. Shenandoah, Shenandoah. Go to the park, learn about it, explore it. It's the most beautiful place and it's right here within just a few hours of, major, of a major city, actually major cities, plural. It's, it's just, words just don't describe it. I know that sounds cliche, but um, you know what I mean. It's just a powerful place. An art quilt is not always pieced, actually. Some are pieced. I just don't do it. I fuse. Some of the most beautiful art quilts you find at big shows like in Houston and Paducah, Kentucky. You see all different kinds. You see uh, pieces that have been stitched um, and you see a lot of fusing. Mine's sort of different. I've taken many different classes. I've you know, learned over the years um, different techniques, but I've developed something that I find works for me. It's similar but different, and what I do is the fusing technique. Fusing not onto a, uh, another piece of fabric, but directly onto the batting itself. And I like silk batting. Now, quilters, if there are any quilters that listen to this program, they'll know what I'm talking about with batting. Batting is the fiber that goes between the top and the back. And like I said, there are three types that I like. There's cotton. Almost all quilters like to use cotton. Traditional quilters love cotton. And wool, which is poofy and extremely warm. It's, it's just yummy. And then there's silk. One of the things I love about a silk batting, <laughs> I'm talking to quilters here. I am so talking to quilters. Buy silk batting. Um, one of the things I love about it is that you get the warmth of wool and it's much lighter. So if you do use it in a traditional pieced quilt, you get the insulation factor, but it's not as heavy, really. And I will say no more about batting. An art quilt is constructed 
um, top first, and then you add a backing, a batting, excuse me, the middle part, and then the backing. The top is the most important, obviously, and that is, that's where the art, that's where the magic happens most of the time. Because when you're making an art quilt, you can, you can use the many different elements that go into this piece to work in your favor, to advance the composition. Especially if you're doing water, hello. You can use thread, you can use inks, paints, whatever. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. First thing you start with is your inspiration, your photograph. You have to know what are the elements of a good composition? Line, shape, color, value, texture, okay? All of those elements are working together in a good composition. You can take thousands of photographs and have only one good composition. When those, when those things are working and being able to identify that composition, then you can get started. So you find that one. What I do is I blow it up. I brought my computer with me, I brought my printer with me. So I take the photograph off my phone and put it on my computer. Easy enough. And I don't have Photoshop, I don't like to adjust the colors, I'm just, I'm just taking the actual photograph and then you print out the number of pages that you need, you know, and tape them together. It's very low tech. It's embarrassingly low tech. Um, but that's, that's how I do it. Once I blow it up, print it out, then tape it together. <sighs> what do I do then? That's my inspiration, because I can see detail. That's when the work begins. So the fabrics that I brought, most of the fabrics that I brought, already have the fusible on. So I can start fusing to the batting. And I use a grid, and I'll show you that later, but I, I just draw a grid on my image. I draw a grid on my batting, and I work in sections. Usually, when you're doing a landscape, you work from back to front. So that usually means I'm starting with the sky on the top, and then middle ground, and then foreground, and foreground is usually what's right at the very bottom. And, um, and I do it using a hot iron and, <laughs> and the fabric that has the glue on the back. That's it. First of all, because you have an image that's enlarged, you can see detail, you can see the texture of the tree. And so you make your choices, your fabric choices accordingly. You really want to get texture, but remember that you're not going to achieve it totally with the fabric. You want to look for the values, the right values. And so I'm, you know, it's called fussy cutting, where you cut certain um, areas out of a piece of fabric that works for that section. And then you apply it. And you just work a little bit at, at a time. Sometimes you can use one large piece of fabric, but then you know, you take small cuttings of other pieces and you apply it, but you can also use thread to enhance that. So um, it's really not all that hard and some of the easiest or most satisfying ways to do this is, is to just keep fusing. Now when you have a tree that's in, uh, in the fall then you want to add the leaves and I I have a certain way of doing this with tiny little pieces of fabric and I'm fusing those down as well it's time consuming but very very much worth it what doesn't inspire you when you when you drive into this park it's magnificent there's nothing like it, nothing like it. The minute you drive onto the park from the, uh, I got here through Thornton Gap 
uh, entrance. And you just start going up and up and up and twist and turn, and there's an overlook that just blows you away. And then you go up a little further, there's another one that just blows you away. <laughs> and it's like, holy cow, holy cow. I've never seen anything like this. I've been to other parks, and yeah, they wow you, but there's something very magical about Shenandoah. So the inspiration here is everywhere. Wow, uh, what a question. What am I not drawn to? Um, there's so much. There is an area at um, mile marker eight, little concrete things. It says an eight, has an eight on it. All of a sudden, uh, it's way north of here. And all of a sudden, you're coming down in elevation, and the trees are getting greener. And then it's sort of a flat spot there for a little bit, and the trees change. So all of a sudden, there's this grove of very tall, not really wide, but very tall, straight trees. I don't know my trees, but I don't know what they are, whether they're oaks or whatever they are. But I call it the cathedral, because all of a sudden, you want to be very quiet. And the, and the branches, which are, you know, way up, I mean, they're way taller than the ones up here on top of the tippy top of the mountain. And they arch over the road like, a, like cathedral arches. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just incredible. And the, uh, the ground cover just hovers. And it's, it's like this fairy garden. It's, it's just stunning. So that's one. One of the things I'm drawn to, another thing I'm drawn to, are these spectacular vistas. No other place, no other place has anything like this. And, and the wildflowers. As you're walking to the falls, Dark Hollow Falls, that's right, Dark Hollow Falls, and then the other one I went to yesterday, Lewis Falls. Wow, what a walk. <laughs> they weren't kidding. It's a little strenuous going back up, but that's okay. I did it. And, um, and at the top of the hill, as you're going down, as you're coming back up, the wildflowers are so pretty. Those little pink flowers. I was looking them up this morning, and of course now the name escapes me. I can't remember what they're called. But um, they're just beautiful. There's so much here that is inspiration. I'm telling you, I have inspiration for a lifetime here. And well, what drew me four years ago was the opportunity to spend some time as an artist out in nature, out in, uh, you know, just photographing and having time to create. Well, <clears throat> four years ago in 2018, I applied and I didn't get in. Oh well. I applied again in 2019 and still didn't get in. And in 2020, I thought, what the heck? You know, the application process is in January, so this is shortly before COVID. But, you know, 2020, whatever. It didn't, it just didn't work out. And so this year, I thought, well, you know, I was really, really not sure whether I would bother doing the application because it requires some time, it requires thought, to answer all the questions. And, and, um, and, you know, you have to have some artwork to show them. Well, I did this time. And I, uh, so anyway, I applied. And lo and behold, I got the call that said, hey, <laughs> not yet. Would you, are you ready for this phone interview? Can you do the phone interview? Sure, of course. I'm all, yeah. 
and uh, thank goodness you didn't make uh, make me wait um, for an entire weekend or whatever. You called like the next day and said, would you like to be here in May? Yes, please. Yes, please. Holy cow. Ah, <laughs> what am I working on right now? Oh my gosh, I've got two projects going on right now. First of all, the first one, which is In Quilters Speak, In Time Out, because I'm not quite sure um, how to proceed. And then the second one is was inspired by a stormy, big sky, big drama day. And um, it was at an overlook. Anyway, I took a photograph of that. This tree that arches back, ah, oh, and it's right there set against this, this landscape that just goes on forever. And that's what I'm working on right now. I'm actually in the quilting process with that. I didn't think I'd get that far considering this is the second one I've done here at the park. So I guess that's in the, I, I like to work at night. I like to work during the day too, but I'm out in the park during the day and here because I, you know, I have a limited amount of time. I do the quilting in the evenings and it's coming along very well and very quickly. I don't know why. Faster here than at home. That's weird. Maybe it's because I don't have to cook. I don't have to clean. That's nice. Well, as far as my work is concerned, I see a series of art quilts and different subject matters. Okay, so the tiny little wildflowers, little nature scapes, little on a small scale, on a big scale. And then we have water that I'm drawn to to begin with. The one thing that I thought that I expected to work on when I got here. Oh, I'm going to do water. And, and the way it turned out was there are so many different things here that, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that too. But there's so much. So it's going to be a series. It's going to be a lot. <sighs> yeah, I have a big task ahead of me. For future artists, for those who have applied already and didn't get in, <laughs> for those who are applying for the first time, and if you don't get in, don't give up. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. Don't take, don't take a rejection, and it's not a rejection, just don't take it personally, because there are a lot of people who apply. And you never know what a jury, what we call in the art quilt world, when things are getting juried in well in the art world. Anyway, you don't know what those people are looking for. And so they may not like your work this year. Keep going. Don't give up. And, and once you do get in, don't waste a minute while you're here. Not one. Yeah. One thing I would like to say is to thank the Shenandoah National Park Trust for giving me the opportunity to not only spend some time working on my art and building a cohesive body of work, but then saying, okay, Nancy, you're in, and they gave me the gift of time. Three full weeks here, thank you.